Well, good morning, good afternoon to our European colleagues. We have Andreas Schneider and Peter Schoon on. Andreas in the commercial group and Peter in operations. Um, sitting here in Golden and just wanting to speak with our European teammates on how uh, the reaction to COVID is going and, and generally how uh, business for CoorsTech is in Europe. So um, first question for you guys. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the status of COVID? Clearly, uh, it's different country by country, but how, how are things going in Europe? Yeah. Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll start. If I look to the Netherlands, uh, the first indications are there that, that it's what we call flattening. So the amount of uh, uh, cases is going not really down, but it's, it's flattening. So it's not going up anymore. And the same yields for the amount of people that, that died uh, due to uh, COVID. So, so that's a little bit positive. From a governmental uh, perspective, you already hear some signs. Hey, we can maybe loosen the strict rules. So for that, I think that's a, that's a good indication. So that's the Netherlands. If I then go to uh, the UK, what is a little bit, if I can call it like that's behind in the in the, the status. So yes, you see some indication that it's also flattening. But if you look to the reactions and the the communication from government, that it's still strict, and we do not hear anything about loosening those strict uh, measures. So I think it will take a little bit longer before the UK is really moving towards, uh, let's say, a better situation. And then. The last country I want to point out a little bit is Sweden. A little bit a strange uh, direction they took. Uh, so uh, yes, they're in, I think, a similar situation as, as Holland and, and, and Germany, but they took the decision not to put in those strict measures. And the reason was that they said, OK, let everybody have that COVID virus. And then at a certain moment, everybody's immune to it. And then we're OK. What I see and what I hear today and also yesterday that they are pulling that back a little bit from that direction. So indications are that they really also have to go to much stricter measures. So I expect that they also will do that and then go along with the rest of what we see in Europe uh, for a certain amount of time, have rather strict measures to, uh, to keep it under control. So that's the three countries. Uh, maybe Andres, you can enlighten a little bit to Germany. Sure. Yeah, no, thank you. So in Germany, we, we have uh, still a, a, a slightly growing, but still growing infection rate. Although also here, the curve is uh, already flattening, but not to an extent where the, um, all the um, uh, medical specialists would actually say that it is already seeing an end of the pandemic. So I think Germany does a pretty good job with all the lockdowns and uh, stay at home rules we have uh, implemented, and this is actually uh, paying off. Uh, Czech Republic has done pretty similar approach even further with locking down the, the borders for, for people actually to, to enter uh, the country. Um, and also in both countries, we see now and hear about potential releases on these uh, strict um, stay-at-home rules, uh, but this will take, at least for Germany and the Czech Republic, I would say another two weeks for a final decision. Uh, the, the real silver lining is also coming from Italy, from uh, a news point of view, where the uh, infection rate also is slowing down. So that's uh, pretty good news, as well as the death rate has now substantially decreased. Uh, although needless to say that the, the amount of um, mortality is, is still uh, very, very high. Well, I guess there is some good news there, um, even though it's early. Yeah. Um, could we turn uh, conversation now a little more closely to Coors Tech? So um, employee safety. Uh, generally, different uh, states, even in the United States, are doing different things with, with safety. And I would uh, suspect that that's true in Europe as well. Could you describe a little bit of the safety situation, safety culture, what we're doing to keep our employees safe at yeah. Coors Tech? Yeah, I think uh, 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 all facilities uh, really uh, apply all the, the rules and all the, 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 the items that are brought forward by CoreStack. Uh, and they really, with a lot of engagement, uh, try to implement those. And I'll see that overall Europe, everybody is really aware of the, the importance of that. 
So that's that's done everywhere. And then you talk all the, the standard things as temperature measurement, uh, social distance, all those items, I see them implemented with 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 good uh, amount of uh, of uh, engagement. And, and you also see that the plan measures are really tough on implementing those those rules. So that, that that's good. Then we have some deviations from country to country. They're not that big. Uh, and what we see, for example, in Czech Republic, uh, you have to wear masks and that's not implemented in the rest of uh, Europe, but that's more the governmental, uh, uh, let's say, uh, point of view. For the rest, I think the, the measures that are being taken and are put forward by Corstech are in fully alignment with, with what the most governments uh, think what is needed. So I think that's, that's, that's done very well. Uh, are, are all our people safe? I think if I look to the core stack plants, that's often more safe than if they go outside because not that much, let's say, uh, measurements and questionnaires if they come in, uh, all those items, you see that outside. So I think also this helps the people to say, hey, yes, core stack is taking care of my health, but also the health of my family. They, we are really measuring. So that's, that's I think, what I hear in, in different plants. Yeah, one follow-up question, uh, Peter. Then, can you talk about uh, motivation? How how are you? How is the team doing with motivation? How are they remaining positive? Um, are attitudes shifting now that we've been dealing with this for a while? Um, there are several items. Yes, communication is their key. Yeah, to to uh, to to keep the people motivated. I think uh, people are very motivated. Uh, what what I see and also try to emphasize. Oh, oh, Try to recognize, try to give some small attentions to people. Uh, for plant managers, operations manager, be present on that facility floor. Of course, keep in mind uh, all the rules we, we put in place, but it's so important to, uh, to also, and then on a distance of two meters, talk with the people and give them some, some confidence. And what I see in several plants that really, really helps and motivation is very high. And a nice example is in Uden, where we at a certain moment had a, uh, an indication that one of the people in the shift could have had COVID or would have had COVID. And then the whole shift, that was the procedure, had to go home for a period of, of seven or eight days. A whole shift. Then the plant manager reached out to R&D, to engineering, even to some people in commercial. Hey guys, we have a problem. And all people said, OK, let's see if we can help there. And, and those people for four days really kept the production ongoing. And that was from motivational perspective, I think, a, a very nice example uh, next to some other examples uh, uh, that motivation is still very high. And also people know, hey, we are an essential business. We are linked to some essential uh, final businesses. So, so people really want to keep that production up and going. I really want to thank those people, in, in, not only in Europe, but especially in Europe, in the plants that really put a lot of time in, in the, let's say, all the actions needed for COVID. So, so from my view, really thank you for this, uh, this, this really extra effort. Absolutely. That's uh, outstanding work and we're very appreciative. Thank you. Andreas, can we turn to uh, the voice of the customer a little bit? Uh, this is a shocking time in markets um, and it's dynamic, I know, and things are, things are rapidly changing, but what can you tell us about uh, course tech customers in Europe? Yes, Michael, it's it's, it's indeed uh, challenging and, and turning and also changing weekly, if not daily. Um, I think uh, from a customer perspective, obviously uh, our team here is in very, very close contact with all of the customers, certainly with all the major customers in the verticals as well as nascent uh, applications. And what we see is, I would call it, market-wise but also geographically pretty different in how the customers had to react perhaps due to governmental orders to just sh uh, shut down uh, their plants like in Italy and France which obviously has a negative impact to our revenue stream for a couple uh, weeks or months. Um, also from a market standpoint we have to say that here in Europe you have um, specifically on the nascent application, but even in, in automotive, for example, or energy, we do see fairly stable demand, although yes, for some customers it is lower, uh, but overall the impact so far uh, for Q1, we are practically on plan 
which is good news. Um, I think the predicted um, slowdown really will happen now with more and more countries being on uh, stay at home um, orders or, or even, uh, even still lockdowns um, impacting the revenue stream in, in Q2. Overall, I think every customer has taken similar measures uh, like we have done and we are very in very much good contact to your point also to get the best reading out of their demand signals going forward. And here we, we talk typically weeks going out, uh, perhaps you get a two months forecast, but beyond that, it's it's very, very hard to predict depending on when it the recovery will hit and certainly also the final customer demand, uh, private consumption as well as industrial consumption, where does it go to? But Generally speaking, some markets really hold in pretty pretty well and firm, actually. Thanks, Andreas, and thanks, Peter. Uh, we really appreciate getting the European perspective. Um, from all of us here in the US, we wish you all well as you progress uh, through this challenging time. And we we are looking to you for uh, for leadership a little bit because you're you seem to be slightly ahead of, of where we are. Um, so so thanks for taking the time with us. If um, anybody has questions for for uh, the group, it's uh, please send an email to co-ceo at coorstech.com. Co-ceo at coorstech.com. That'll get a uh, message directly to us. Um, but thanks very much, Peter and Andreas, for your time. Thank you very much, Michael.